invalid, inapplicable, wrong. These are words used to describe answers. Usually wrong answers, but still answers. Who is the judge of what is right and what is wrong? Who is the judge of what is right and, what, and who is wrong? How does one judge what is right and what is wrong? In our current day society, people judge that diversity is a disease in America because it harms white supremacy. Others judge that my country, Haiti, is a shithole country because we are poor and suffer a terrible earthquake. Furthermore, others judge that people from shithole countries can't contribute anything to the US and that we're only gonna make it worse. In other words, I am not the answer to American progression in medicine or law or diplomacy or engineering or business because I am shit. Because I am inapplicable, I am wrong, I am invalid. And yet, I am here. I'm here talking to you today with the same aspirations and dreams as anybody else. I've been the only black in a white crowd. I've been the only poor in a community of wealth. I've been one of few left behind in the education system. One instance of this was in middle school. This is me, sixth grade year, at my school called Fenn. Now, one thing that you can notice in this picture is that I'm the only black one there. In reality, there's only two black students out of 64 in my grade. And furthermore, I was one of few who could actually afford the 40 grand tuition. It was thanks to programs like Stepping Stone that through strong guidance and encouragement enabled me to get there. However, despite this, there is still a difference between me and the others, because I was recognized as both a racial and low-income minority. One day, during seventh grade, me and my friends were playing basketball. A particular friend of mine, his name was Jack, we finished shooting hoops and decided to play tag around the gym. Another classmate of, of ours, his name was Johnny, he came into the gym and what he saw was different from my perception. While I saw me and Jack having fun, having a good time, Johnny saw me four inches taller, 20 pounds bigger, chasing Jack. And so he came in front of me and he told me, hey, leave Jack alone. Now, as a seventh grade version of myself, I didn't really see this as anything harmful or anything mean, and so I said, hey, chill down, we're just having fun, back off. But he insisted, saying, I told you to leave Jack alone. And so my next response, I pushed him out of my way, and I said, dude, back off, and his next response was both bruising and sharp. What hurt more wasn't the fact that Johnny had punched me in my face. It was the fact that Johnny had punched me in my face because I was black. He saw me from my fake Reeboks and my nappy hair and my $20 khakis and my $20 t-shirt and my skin color. Not for my amiable traits, not for my enthusiasm or my tendency to want to make others around me laugh. And so when it came to time for me to decide how I can thrive in that community despite my differences, I saw the answer and be more prideful of my heritage. My Haitian ancestors were part of a movement in which the first slave nation gained independence in the entire world. I wonder how much of our society today knows this. I used this strength to reshape how I presented myself and acted. I was no longer the pushover type because with bigger discovery and admirance of who I was, I could become 
stronger and more confident in who I am. And as a result of that, I began to change. I began to change. My grades went from C's to B's and then A's. I was able to say in that community that I am a Haitian immigrant pursuing success just like any one of them, and I am thriving. This is the idea that I want other immigrants and first generations to understand, to be inspired by, to be moved by. The idea of passing past a racial minority label, past a socioeconomic minority label, and towards the idea of using our capacities in our differences to impact our communities. When I first came into America, it was just me, my mom, and my dad. My mom was a computer science major in Haiti, and my dad was an electrical engineer major. My mom was jobless, but my dad had an occupation. His purpose was to deliver sustaining energy to the rest of Haiti. He did so through unstable politics, through national qualifying exams. He persevered to become an electromechanical engineer. For seven years, he worked for his college degree, and then for four, he worked in a hydroelectric plant. But when it came the time to come to the US, all of that was called invalid, inapplicable, wrong. The fact was that all of my dad's accomplishments were too shitty for American standards. And so when it came to time to come here and look for a better future, he had to start all over. But to come here and sacrifice all of that without a purpose, now that was crazy. You see, the idea was that he came here for me, for my sister, for our family, for our future. And so he pursued education again, this time with even more passion, with even more purpose, knowing that not only did he want to impact his family, but he wanted to impact the community. He started in 2008, continued through 2017, and is still at 2018. Will it take a normal college student four years? Will have taken my dad 11. But during all of this, did he complain? Did he crumble down? Did he give up? No. Now, this is a pretty funny picture of my dad. But if there's one thing that you can see in that picture, it is his notebook right there, his phone on top, and his laptop to the side. That is my dad. All work, all day, for me, for my sister, for our family, and for his dream to pursue his passion and impact his community. 11 years sounds like a lot of time, and people over and over keep asking me why that sacrifice. That sacrifice he made was because he didn't come here to survive. He did end up surviving in Haiti with the crazed militias, with the wealth of murderers and thieves. He came here to thrive. He came here to make my family thrive. Why are you here? Why are all of you here? What is your purpose? A fun uh, a statistic is that um, these are top 10 occupied jobs by immigrants in the US today. When you look at this list, there's two things that stand out. One, that this doesn't even require, none of these jobs require a high school degree, let alone a college one. Number two, none of these jobs even breaks 45 grand a year. From this data, the one conclusion is that immigrants not only are unable to use the resources of what everyone says is the greatest nation in the world, land of the free, but they're also enabled 
to build a strong foundation financially. What does this mean for you, the youth, the first generations, the immigrants? This means that it's your time to take your future and your passion into your hands and deliver us out of this, these circumstances. Why am I here? I'm here to get my mom a nice house and nice things. Since I was five years old, she told me, you have to become something someday so you can get me a nice house and nice things. Why are you all here? That is the question, not just for today, but for tomorrow and the day after that. And every day of your lives, think about why are you all here? Because it's not to be restricted as a socioeconomic minority. It's not to be restricted as a racial minority. It's not here to survive. It's here to thrive. Thank you.